Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. For more such conceptual videos and engineering sub on engineering subjects, you can log in to our website www.claryconcepts.com. Alright, so today in this lecture, we will be talking about the classification of fluids. Now, there are different categories in which fluids are categorized and today we will see all of them one by one. Okay, so the very first class category in which fluid is classified is Newtonian fluids. So, this fluids, let us look at the definition. Newtonian fluid is the one in which the viscous, viscous shear stress is linearly proportional to the rate of shear strain. Which means that if you draw the graph, if you do an experiment with those fluids and if you draw the graph of shear stress versus rate of shear strain, you will observe that for this kind of Newtonian fluid, the graph is straight line passing through the origin. And those are known as Newtonian fluid and we all know that such fluids will always obey Newton's law of viscosity which is tau equals to mu du by dy, right. So all those fluids which obeys Newton's law of viscosity, they are categorized under Newtonian fluids. And the very simple example of Newtonian fluids is water that we use regularly and also air. These are the common examples of Newtonian fluids. Let us move, by, move on to the next type of fluid which is dilatant fluid. Now please concentrate over here because understanding this is little tricky. So when you draw the graph of shear stress versus rate of shear strain for dilatant fluid, firstly I would say all the fluids which are not Newtonian in nature, they are all said to be non-Newtonian fluids. Now there are various categories in non-Newtonian fluid, one of which is dilatant fluid. So when I draw the graph, I will see something like this. It is no more a straight line but it is some, something like this. Now what does this curva, curvature indicate? Let us uh, look at it very, you know, in a detailed way. So for this kind of fluids, if I would like to draw an equation between shear stress and rate of shear strain, I will see something like this, where tau equals to k du by dy raised to n, where this k and n are some constant, k is known as consistency index and n is known as uh, flow behavior index and they both depends on fluid as well as the flow of the fluid. Now. Uh, if you look at this graph, we all know that uh, the, the viscosity of the fluid is the, is the slope of the uh, line uh, for a shear stress versus rate of shear strain, right? So if I just would like to dissolve this du by dy raised to n in these two terms wherein du by dy raised to n minus 1 and du by dy raised to 1. So now if you add both these together again, you will end up with du by dy raised to n itself. So up, what you have done is simply you have taken one power out of this and uh, kept du by dy separately. Now with this what you do is this particular parameter k du by dy raised to n minus 1 which is prefix of du by dy is basically the viscosity of the fluid. Now here if you see viscosity is no more a constant term. It is actually dependent on the term called du by dy which is representing the rate of shear strain. So viscosity of dilatant fluids is no more a fluid property but it depends on the way on the rate of shear strain, right. Now if you look for dilatant fluid, the value of n is always greater than 1. That means if n is greater than 1, the n minus 1 will be a positive number. If n minus 1 is a positive number, it means du by dy. If you increase du by dy, the, the value of overall viscosity will be higher. So more the value of du by dy, more is the viscosity. That means more the value of du by dy, you see, more is the viscosity. That means if you look at this graph, if you try to draw tangent at different different du by dy to this curvature, you will see that tangent is, is gradually increasing the slope, right? The, the slope of the tangent at different points is gradually increasing, which means that at higher rate of shear strain, the viscosity of such fluids is higher. So therefore, you can say that this kind of fluid are also shear thickening fluids. So a dilatant fluid is the one whose viscosity increases with the increase in rate of shear strain and therefore they are also known as shear thickening fluids. And there are examples of this fluid. You may be, you might be amazed understanding this concept but if you look at this, uh, you know, sugar solution in water or you can say the aqueous suspension of starch is basically are the two examples of this kind of dilatant fluids. Let us move back, I uh, move uh, ahead with another uh, fluid uh, type which is pseudoplastic. This fluid is totally opposite to dilatant fluid. So here if I draw the graph of pseudoplastic, I will say something like this. Now here the behavior is totally opposite. Now if you look at the tangent, uh, the tangent slope is constantly decreasing. Now see how do I 
go to another slope is decreasing because my tangent is becoming more and more horizontal as you move ahead with increasing rate of shear strain. So let us see what are those fluids. So when I draw the diagram, when I when I try to formulate the relationship between shear stress and rate of shear strain, I will again end up with this kind of relationship. But the only difference over here is the value of n. The value of n for dilatant fluid was greater than 1, but here the value of n for the pseudoplastic fluid is less than 1. Now since n is less than 1, it means n minus 1 will be a negative number. Now if n minus 1 is a negative number, that means du by dy will be in the denominator part. Now if a du by dy is in the denominator and if the value of du by dy increases, that means denominator value increases and that means overall value of this uh, parameter will decrease. See, if denominator value increases, the overall ratio will decrease. That means for a higher value of du by dy, the ratio will be, the viscosity will be lower. And therefore, at larger rate of shear strain for pseudoplastic fluids, the viscosity will be reducing. And therefore, you can say pseudoplastic fluid are the one whose viscosity decreases with the rate of shear strain. And therefore, they are also known as shear thinning fluids. In, in you know if you compare this with this dilated dilated was known as shear thickening but pseudoplastics are known as shear thinning fluids and you will be surprised to know the example of this kind of fluids this the example is really close to our body look at this human blood is basically a fluid and it's an example of pseudoplastic fluid right and there's a reason why uh, you can see that uh, it is doctor always recommend for patients who are suffering from high blood pressure or they you know that uh, the, the, the flow in the veins should not be reduced below certain value because otherwise what will happen is blood will start increasing its resistance the viscosity to a larger extent wherein you can also have the blockage of, of the you know in, within the veins and all. And another example is milk of pseudoplastic. Now big harm plastic. All of us use this fluid regularly uh, in our day to day life. Let us see which I mean what is the behavior of this kind of uh, fluid. They are the fluid which obeys or which you know which behaves like a solid below a certain value of stress and above certain value of stress they behave like a fluid. Now see if I draw the graph the graph is vertically inclined line the vertical line and then from here it has taken the, yeah, the, the inclined line right. So if you see the rate of shear strain up to a certain value of stress there is no strain that means there is no movement at all. Beyond that, you will find the fluid taking the flow, right? The rate of shear strain increases. That means what? If I talk about the example, toothpaste that we use regularly. This paste, if you see, it is an example of the big harm plastic. If you, if you press the toothpaste from the rear portion, you will see that slowly, slowly, if you keep on increasing the shear force or the force, uh, of beyond a certain value of force, the fluid will, the, the toothpaste will start flowing. Be, be, below that, below that value of force, the toothpaste will behave as a solid material, right? So this kind of become plastic are referred as, I mean, they, they behave as a solid below this critical stress and they behave as a fluid above this threshold value of shear stress. So you can now, let me talk about the fifth category called ideal fluid. Now there is actually nothing called ideal fluid in nature. But ideal is referring to a fact that the viscosity is zero. So the ideal fluid is a hypothetical fluid having zero viscosity. And if you draw the line, now zero viscosity meaning the line should be having the slope zero in the shear stress versus rate of shear strain graph, which is the line which has zero slope, it is totally horizontal, right? So ideal fluid is like this. Now, if you look at this line, it, it represents that even, you know, even uh, if you do not have any shear stress applied, or if you do not have any shear force applied, this fluid will keep on moving or this fluid will keep on flowing. So ideal fluid actually, it does not exist in nature as such, but it does not really exist in nature as such. But why do we study it? Because in many engineering applications, you would like to neglect the viscosity aspect. Why? Because viscosity in comparison to other forces, viscous forces, viscous effects is very, very negligible. And if you want to deal with those applications in engineering, you tend to assume that the fluid is inviscid. That means fluid is ideal in nature, right? Let's say for example, if I, if I am studying the external aerodynamics of an aircraft, aircraft is having span and you know, the length of almost 90, 90, 95 meters. Now in this domain, the effect of drag force, lift force and the weight are huge. In comparison to those values, if you talk about the air viscosity, air resistance in the flow, viscous are very, very negligible. So if you want to neglect those aspects, the 
the effect of viscous uh, forces in those kind of engineering problems wherein in comparison to other forces they are very negligible in nature you assume your fluid to be inviscid you assume that now when you assume it is in space in which that means you are keeping mu as zero so that your problems becomes more simple right so that's how ideal fluid is otherwise there is nothing like ideal fluid in existing in nature so let me talk you i uh, show you about couple of videos that will uh, you know i would like to ask you that kindly understand i mean what kind of fluid is this see there is a group i have taken this video from one of the youtube channel uh, it is written over here now if you look at this it's a basically a uh, mixture of soil clay and water kind of thing right and this is known basically as uh, quicksand now there is a group of tourist and there is a guide of the tourist uh, who is explaining other people that in case if you get stuck in this quicksand how you could escape from that right now i would like to ask you that understand this and see this video very uh, cons i mean concentrate on this video and do let me know which kind of fluid is this right so slowly she is going into the quicksand you can see it is behaving actually as a fluid you see yeah now she will she will explain how to come out of this particular quicksand you cannot easily come out of it directly right if you think so that i'll just uh, you know apply the force on my leg and i'll pull it pull them out it will not it will not happen that way you see she will also say that if you try to panic yourself if you try to come out directly you will not be able because the the, the fluid holds you back so she will rather prove how i mean she will she will demonstrate how to come out of this quicksand it's a good video on this youtube channel you can go and search okay just a minute i'll just cut this video up to an extent now see what she is trying to do she is explaining that you you apply pressure on one leg and slowly you try to wiggle your leg one of the leg in the in the fluid it will ease you out and then take out your leg slowly slowly and then put a pressure on that particular leg and wiggle the another leg okay now see now if you see if one leg is came out and if you try to be happy and come out directly but still you will not be able to come you see that's what she is saying do not be very happy just uh, you know if you if you have got your one leg escaped from this quicksand now slowly again you have to apply pressure on one of the leg and uh, slowly move your another leg within the fluid itself it will ease out the viscous forces and you will be able to come out of this quicksand very easily yeah now tell me which which kind of fluid is this amongst those five categories she came out see now let me show you one animated video which is again i have taken this from tech insider you see uh, it is very good animated video i found this on youtube that's why i brought it for you so they are they are giving you the explanation of how to escape the quicksand first of all don't panic that's what they are saying it is impossible to uh, drown into the quicksand right we have seen all this in the movies that you get drown in the quicksand but actually it is not because quicksand has a lower density than our human body so quicksand is a mixture of sand clay and salt water yes it thickens over time but it is very sensitive to any pressure on it see it is very sensitive to any pressure on it because it's extremely dense human only sink about up to their waist up to this particular point what makes it so dangerous is its viscosity once disturbed quicksand becomes much more viscous now you see that means what if you try to uh, come out of this quicksand very quickly that means you are applying higher rate of shear strain the quicksand will behave as a more viscous fluid right don't ask your friend to pull you out directly otherwise what will happen you will see and this may happen also it's a funny example don't worry yeah so what you need to do just wiggle your leg inside the fluid very very gently and slowly this will what will this do is it will reduces the viscosity of this fluid and then you can come out of this quicksand on applying the pressure on your back right this is what they say now lay back on your back and then you can easily come out so now tell me which kind of fluid is this 
you just think about it you see slowly he will come out of this quicksand yeah see yeah now tell me which kind of fluid this is a category of at a higher rate of shear strain at a higher rate of shear strain the viscosity is higher so let me show you the summary you will get the chart at a higher rate of shear strain viscosity is higher so this is a dilatant fluid right quicksand is a dilatant fluid so this is summary we have seen all these five types of fluid and we have understood each one of them with their behaviors right thank you so much see you in the next class